Hello, my name is Mike McGuirk, and I'm extremely excited to be a presenter at the 2021 SAS Global Forum. I'm also very proud to share that I've been a happy user of SAS products for the last 30 years. My topic today is focused on the importance of adopting ethical business practices in the analytics and data science fields. However, before I dive into that topic, I want to provide a, a brief introduction. I'm currently a full-time faculty member at Babson College, where I teach courses on marketing analytics and digital analytics. And before I transi transitioned to teaching in 2016, I was an analyst and a consultant in the analytics field for over 25 years at both startups and really well-established companies such as Epsilon and T-Tech. I've also had the great fortune of working with brands such as General Motors, OnStar, Harley-Davidson, CVS Pharmacy, British Petroleum, Duncan, uh, Signer Insurance, and, and many more. And one last thing I'll point out is that the topic of ethical analytics is something I'm extremely passionate about. Last year, I was very honored and quite honestly humbled to be a contributor to the book, 97 Things About Ethics Everyone in Data Science Should Know, which was published by O'Reilly Media. So before jumping into the topic, I wanted to share a high level outline of the presentation. I will start by sharing my current personal observations on the usage of data collection and analytic practices in the business environment particularly in the marketing and customer experience business functions. Next, I will provide an overview of what different industry experts are saying about the state of ethical analytic practices in business today. And then I will share several different practices and policies that both colleges and universities and businesses can implement to further promote the adoption of ethical analytics. Finally, there will be time reserved at the end of this presentation for open Q&A. So let's get started. In 2017, The Economist, which is one of my favorite publications, published the article called, The World's Most Valuable Resource is No Longer Oil, But Data. Not only do I agree with this, but I feel very strongly that if data is used properly, it provides a win-win situation for consumers and for businesses. Having applied analytics in the marketing and customer experience fields for many years, it's clear that, that data and analytics fuel more relevant and personalized experiences with consumers that hopefully drive greater customer satisfaction over time. It's also a win for businesses because they can use the insights to implement customer-centric practices that lead to greater customer loyalty, greater consumer advocacy, and business growth. Unfortunately, recent transgressions, including data breaches at Facebook, gender bias in scoring algorithms at Goldman Sachs, and the unthinkable, unintended consequences of recommender systems at YouTube have contributed to a steady erosion in consumer trust. In the case of Facebook, they allowed data firm Cambridge Analytica to sell psychological profiles of American voters to, to political campaigns. And this was acquired through private Facebook data of tens of millions of users. This is the largest data breach ever in Facebook's history. The issue at Goldman Sachs with their credit risk model algorithms really presented themselves or pre presented itself when some Apple card customers determined that the credit card issuer, Goldman Sachs, was giving women lower credit limits, even if they shared the same assets and accounts with their spouse. And finally, Predatory comments on videos starring children has been an issue for years, but reports began to surface that YouTube's recommendation algorithm was feeding predators 
a constant stream of content starring minors. This news resulted in dozens of advertisers from Nestle to Epic Games pulling their advertising dollars from the platform until the issue was resolved. So let's talk a little bit about some statistics, some trends and predictions from the industry experts. A recent survey called Experience 2030, which was conducted by SAS and Futurum, really quantifies the issues that businesses face as they look to capitalize on the power of consumer data and analytics. 76% of consumers are concerned with the amount of product search and product purchase data that's being gathered by businesses. 73% are concerned with brands' usage of their personal data and feel it is out of control. 71% of consumers feel businesses should not be allowed to use their data and share it with other companies. And 61% of consumers feel they have no control over the level of privacy they need for themselves and their family. And finally, 50%, that's half of the consumers that were surveyed, believe businesses are hiding bad things they've done with user data and privacy. I feel we've really reached a very interesting and criti critical point in the data collection and business analytics fields. Based on the success of implementing data-driven business practices, businesses are more eager than ever to find new sources of data to gain that competitive advantage. Forrester Research found that 56% of the businesses they surveyed are planning to launch initiatives to source new external data, led by data hunters, which quite honestly sounds a bit frightening. What really has us at this crossroad is that consumers are beginning to dig in their feet and demonstrate their growing dissatisfaction with the use of their personal data by businesses by refusing to respond to requests for consumer feedback. The International Institute for Analytics, which is an independent research and advisory firm that I really respect, has listed ethics and analytics as a top three business imperative over the last two years. In their 2019 predictions and priorities report, they listed start formally addressing analytic ethics today as the number one analytic priority. They followed that up in 2020 report by listing decide if your organization should compete on analytics. And, and they made that the number three analytic priority. Meaning, if you establish a very visible leadership position on analytic ethics, it could actually provide a sustainable competitive advantage. And I think some people would argue or claim that Tim Cook and Apple are looking to do that today. However, businesses' ability to self-regulate in this area has really moved too slow and government has stepped in and started to impose greater regulation on consumer data. The General Data Privacy Regulation, also known as the GDPR, was adopted in May 2018 in the EU, and it gives consumers far greater control over the usage of their data. This applies to all businesses that collect or process data of EU citizens or residents. Now business, businesses' requests for consent to collect and use consumer data must be transparent and easy to understand by consumers and then also consumers have the right to withdraw their consent at any time. The CCPA or the California Consumer Privacy Act was implement, implemented more recently in January, 2020, and it has adopted many similar regulations around the usage of personal data by businesses on California citizens. In my opinion, this type of regulation is really a double-edged sword. It certainly provides consumers with greater peace of mind to know they have more control over their personal data and that businesses will be penalized if they don't comply with these regulations. 
However, if the regulations are too onerous, then businesses will quickly lose their ability to stay abreast of the voice of the customer or the voice of the consumer, including they won't have as good an understanding of what consumer specific needs and preferences are. Mm -hmm. And this will only set back businesses ability to, to really implement customer centric business practices, which really are in the best interest of the consumer. So this leads to the obvious question, what can be done to improve this situation before the data usage divide gets even greater between business and consumers? I'd like to first start by focusing on the role college and universities can play. First off, I think it is the responsibility of every college with a business analytics or data science program to create greater awareness around the damaging consequences of poor data stewardship and reckless analytic practices. Students in my classes, particularly undergraduate Gen Z students, love to engage in discussions about ethical analytics. And this can even be further reinforced through the use of case studies and bringing in guest speakers on this topic. It really can be a experiential learning um, process. I also think it's important to rethink and reevaluate some of the data dimensions that have been used in marketing and analytics for decades. For example, the use of gender, ethnicity, and socioeconomic status to segment consumers for marketing campaigns can actually perpetuate the exclusion of consumers. And it is important that we teach analytic methods that utilize data dimensions such as consumer behaviors, consumer needs, and consumer preferences, because these are customer driven and these represent consumers' own self-declared interests and attitudes. The third thing is the topic of ethical analytics and that it should not be a one unit lesson that is taught and checked off the list. Instead, it should be part of a recursive curriculum design that requires students to reflect on the appropriate use of consumer data throughout the course and even throughout the entire undergraduate or graduate program experience. Finally, I do really believe that college professors and instructors can inspire students to bring what they have learned in the classroom with them into the workplace. And we need to build students' confidence and empower them to speak up if they come across questionable uses of consumer data in their organizations. The business community, excuse me, the business community can play an even more impactful role in ethical analytics. The first thing that really needs to happen is to develop a culture of responsibility. That is, you need to put yourself in the shoes of the consumer when setting up data privacy and data usage policies. I, I sometimes think of it like this. If I've ju just developed a modeling algorithm that was to be used to score and target consumers for the next marketing campaign, the question is, would I be comfortable and willing to invite a few of those consumers that were just scored with this targeting model into the office to describe to them what information was just used to segment them and target them for this campaign? If the answer is yes, then great. Keep doing what you're doing. However, if the answer is no, then it might be time to really reassess what consumer information is being used in this process and other processes like it. The next thing that could be really impactful and put more consumers at ease with data collection is the development of what I call value exchange propositions. This means if you're going to ask consumers for their feedback or their permission to use their personal data, then you need to make it crystal clear what's in it for them. Will you give them some kind of financial reward for the usage of the data? Will you guarantee their data will be used to tangibly improve the customer experience 
And if so, how? As an example, suppose you just moved and we're in the process of setting up your internet and cable services at your new location. Wouldn't it be nice if the sales agent for the cable service provider explained to you that they will ask you to complete a five to 10 question survey regarding your cable programming interests and needs. You are also told, told by this cable service provider that this, service that this survey information will be used to identify the ideal cable plan or package that meets those self-reported needs. That would be, to me, an obvious value exchange. By providing personal information, I now only pay for the programming that I'll actually use, as opposed to feeling like the sales agent is only trying to upsell me to purchase the most expensive plan. Yeah, sure, this, this could leave revenue on the table in the short term, but the trust the loyalty and the consumer advocacy this would create would most likely generate more lifetime value per customer and more than offset the short-term loss in revenue by instituting this type of customer first practice. The point is, it can't be a one-way siphoning of data only for the perceived benefit of businesses. That's just not a sustainable data collection process. The next business practice to consider is the implementation of customer feedback management systems to immediately reduce the negative trend of consumer survey fatigue that we're seeing. This would keep track of every time a customer is solicited for feedback and would enable the adoption of corporate policies that govern the appropriate level of feedback requests that that business can operate with. Next, it's create it's it's critical. Next, I'm sorry, it's critical to create a data governance team that is cross-functional, that's diverse, and it represents the interest of all consumers when it comes to establishing policies for data collection and the application of analytics and AI practices at that business. There is great value and great power in leveraging diverse perspectives when it comes to critical, important topics such as consumer and data privacy. It is also extremely important to begin to invest in data literacy and data security training for employees to ensure that the proper usage and handling of personal data is taking place inside businesses across all different units. And finally, it is important to build in safeguards that reduce the risk of intentional or maybe even more likely unintentional development of biased algorithms, as was the case with Goldman Sachs, unfairly offering lower credit limits to women during the early stages of the Apple credit card launch. So as a final note, I want to really reiterate that I advocate for the adoption of these ethical analytic practices, not to be a thorn in the side of business, but instead to identify ways to win back consumer trust and to ensure that the world's most valuable resource, data, as the economists put it, will continue to flow into all aspects of customer-centric business operations. I want to thank you for attending this session, and please feel free to contact me through either my email or my LinkedIn that's both listed here. Uh, I certainly love speaking with people on all different topics in the analytics and data science fields. Thank you.